One quarterback who did not enter the NFL via Alabama, Deshaun Watson. He was a Clemson guy with Dabo Swinney who said at one point before the draft, if you pass on Deshaun Watson, it's like passing on Michael Jordan. Now the Texans hoping still to trade Deshaun Watson and the Dolphins still in the mix. As we said yesterday, until they come out and say absolutely positively not, we don't want him, they are in play. There's too much smoke for there not to be some sort of a fire burning at the bottom of it. Right. I was told yesterday by a very good and reliable source, not to be confused with my usual crappy sources, sorry, London, <laughs> Stephen Ross, the owner of the team, really wants Deshaun Watson. And there was a curious pushback by the Dolphins to local reporters. Our friend Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald tweeted, the Dolphins are pushing back on my report that Steve Ross really wants Deshaun Watson. The Dolphins just now told local reporters that Ross, quote, does not force football decisions, end quote, and, quote, believes in Tua, end quote. Says Jackson, I believe that to be true, but it doesn't make Florio's report wrong either. And look, there is a donut hole there. Stephen Ross doesn't force football decisions is not Stephen Ross doesn't care one way or the other. Stephen Ross doesn't want Deshaun Watson. No, he doesn't. Hey, he wants Watson. He's just not going to force it. Right. And the other point that I've made over and over again, unless you're Jerry Jones, the owner and GM of the Cowboys, if you're the owner of an NFL team, you don't have to force decisions. The people who are employed by you, if they want to remain employed by you, they will pick up the subtleties and the nuances exactly. when the boss makes it clear what the boss wants. Right. And in this case, they know, just like they knew last year he wanted Joe Burrow, he desperately wanted Joe Burrow. They tried to trade for Joe Burrow. He wanted Tua. They got Tua. Now he wants Watson. The question is, are they going to get Watson? Yeah, it's the question. I don't think it's dead yet. I mean, they could say whatever they want. I know I got my reliable sources too, and I know there's still action behind the scenes. You know, as far as involving Deshaun Watson, and and it's just it's not a dead subject. You know, of course, hey, you know the Dolphins are they're going to keep pushing forward right now. You know, they don't know if anything's going to get done. They're going to support Tua. I'm sure they like what they've seen from Tua throughout the preseason he played really good it sounds like he practiced really good to go along with that but he ain't Deshaun Watson you know Deshaun Watson again he's special he really is so uh, I don't know where this goes I think we're getting into the 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 time of the year where I mean I would think like as far as Miami's concerned like it's coming down to a deadline they're not this is not going to be something I think you're going to hear about in week three it's still going to be going on it's like it better get done here in the next few days or it's not going to get done. But I, I, I know for sure that Houston is, you know, taking calls and, and talking to some teams for sure. Here's the thing. Yeah. And, and this is the only thing that causes me to say, wait, it's not about getting Watson on board and getting Watson up to speed and having Watson help the Dolphins this year. Because I do think that Stephen Ross, who did not become a multi-billionaire because he's dumb, right. I think he's self-aware as it relates to the fate of his football team. He was very self-aware a couple of years ago when early in the year it felt like they were tanking. He understood you got to take your lump sometime in order to get better. With Deshaun Watson, this is not about propping the team up in a season where there are nine other extremely viable contenders and the game of musical chairs only has seven available seats. This is not going to be a year that the Dolphins are likely to climb to the top of the AFC if they even get to the playoffs. So if you can get Watson now, if you can get him for less than the mega package of picks that will be coming next year, when you have seven, eight, nine teams jockeying for him and the Texans are in a position to maybe get more, if they get lucky as it relates to the very serious off-field questions that are pending against Deshaun Watson as it relates to civil complaints for sexual misconduct, criminal complaints for sexual misconduct. We don't know if there'll be clarity in March. If there is, from a criminal standpoint, they could get three ones and two twos or more if you've got a bunch of teams that are jostling to try to get Deshaun Watson. So if I'm Stephen Ross, I'm looking at the same. Wait a minute. I'm not doing this for 2021. Yes, right. I'm doing this for 2031 and every year in between. So... You know what? Hmm. You know, I've got resources available to me. I'm going to make some phone calls. I'm going to find out what's going on with these cases. I'm going to make it an, a, an assessment. My organization is going to make an assessment of what they think the risk is. And maybe maybe we do give maybe we make them an offer they won't refuse, not an offer they can't refuse, just an offer they won't refuse. Maybe we offer them two ones 
and maybe a third pick that can become a first rounder, depending upon how much he plays over the next couple of years, something to entice them, something to get them to stop and say, here's an answer to our problem, but a lot less than you'd give up in March. I So I don't think it's about getting him on board right and now. becoming a Super yeah. Bowl team now. Yeah. It's about having a team like the Patriots have been for the last 20 years, at least before Brady left, where you're a high-level contender every single year, not necessarily this year, if that makes any sense at all. No, no, it does. I think it's a valid point, and, and I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, it's the bigger picture. You're, I mean, you're right. I mean, I do view the Dolphins as a playoff caliber football team. I do right now. But Super Bowl team, of course, no. And you get to Sean Watson, you know, and we got a lot of young players and things going all in the right direction in Miami where, yeah, you get Watson there, you know, uh, okay, yeah, maybe uh, you know things don't go the way you want this year, but you're a legit Super Bowl contender like you're saying for the next four or five years. And, hey, they got a lot of young talent. How many damn draft picks do you need? How many young guys do you need? At some point, you just got to go, hey, this is the guys we got. We can't just keep drafting young guys. Let's, let's, you know, let's trade away some of these picks we got to fill it in with some proven commodity veterans that kind of polish off the, the roster to make it like legit Super Bowl contender like you're saying. I would think that's part of their thought process too. Um, I don't know. I know. Next can you imagine? Can you imagine right. if, if – the Dolphins were the Rams right now with all those picks. The Ra the Ram and the Rams really wanted Deshaun Watson. They would give it up. They everything. Give it all. Give them the mascot. Give them everything to get Deshaun Watson. It just shows you how different the teams are. That the Dolphins value stockpiling the picks. Yeah, at some point, you got to use the. Got every one of those picks is a lottery ticket. Yeah. If it's you only, can trade them in for a right. sure thing, you do it. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, you, you just you, you you can't always be like. Oh, we're going to, you know, mold young talent, mold young talent. At some point, you just got to go, this is the talent we got. We need a few pieces here to, to make some splash or, you know, really take the roster over the top and let's do that. And I know, like, next year, they don't have multiple first-round picks next year, right? They have just the one, one they pick. They have multiple next year. Do they have, they two, do have, they have two first-round picks next year? Because I thought maybe they traded away one from to Philadelphia when they moved back up after the San Francisco trading down. That's where I wasn't sure. Um, I think I'm right. But I'm, what I was going to ask about was the year after that maybe they had one. I, I can't remember exactly, and maybe I should have came to the segment knowing those type of things. They do only have one next year. That's what I thought. Okay, you know, see, I have that brain sometimes. But 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 they have two in twenty twenty. That's where it is. It's two in twenty. I, all right, that's where I was getting to. So you got some stuff to play with there. And how many years are we going to just continue to build the roster? You know. So uh, I I. Uh, I don't think this is dead. We know the rumors are real. There's real interest from the Miami Dolphins. This isn't like, you know, bull crap, sorry, Manchester, uh, talk or that we're trying to, you know, make, you know, fun here on TV. No, this is this is a real thing. And I do think there's some teams interested, of course, in, in Deshaun Watson, for real interested. And I still think conversations are going on behind the scenes. I know they are. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.